Welcome to the Backspace Academy Lab on programming DynamoDB using the AWS Node.js software development kit. In the first part of this lab we're going to look at using the DynamoDB console and we're going to use it to create a Dynamo, DynamoDB table uh, and then we're going to manually add items to that table and what you'll find is that will be a very very slow process to add those items to the table. Um, to, and it's something that you would not want to do very often uh, and you wouldn't want to do it with any any decent amount of data. Uh, so in the second part we're going to look at using our Node.js EC2 instance and we're going to connect to our DynamoDB table through the using the SDK and then we're going to look at grabbing a JSON file which will contain our items uh, multiple items there and we're going to uh, use a batch write item method and that will import those items into our DynamoDB table. So once we've done that we can look at querying the data and we're going to use two different techniques uh, to, to do that. Uh, I want to give you the, the both options. One was a bit older and uh, is, is pretty well being deprecated by um, Amazon Web Services and then the, the newest one uh, is the key condition expression. So the first one we'll look at will be a key conditions object uh, and then we'll look at using uh, creating the same query using a key condition expression. Okay, so we'll just start off by selecting the DynamoDB console. And then we'll create a table. Okay, so we're just going to call this uh, test table. Now, what we need to identify first is a primary key. So let's have a look at that. So primary key provides a schema that uniquely identifies each item in the table. Primary key names can be between 1 and 255 characters long with no character restrictions. Okay, so we're just going to use ID as the primary key. And that's going to be a hash. We're not going to have a range with that. And so that's going to be a number. So I select ID. We'll do capital I in lowercase d. Okay, so this is where we define our secondary indexes. So we don't need to create a secondary index, it is optional, so uh, we don't have to do this. The reason we do create them though is that it, it greatly speeds up finding the data that we need to find through queries. So instead of having to scan through all our data to find what we need, uh, using a query uh, from a secondary index is, is very quick, much quicker. So First thing we want to define is a hash key. So we're going to look at, we're going to query all of our product categories. Okay, so we're going to kind of query product categories and we're going to query them based upon price. So our hash key is going to be product category and that will be a string. And then we go, our range will be the price. So that's a number price. And then what we do is we want to project all our attributes across. Uh, and now we just click on add index to table and that's it there. So now we can continue. Now we need to look at our provisioned capacity. Um, so we'll just leave that at two capacity units of read and write. And that's fine, we'll continue with that. We won't enable streams at this point in time. That, that again is optional. We won't put any alarms on there, but we could put alarms that are going to tell us when our read capacity units uh, exceeds 80% uh, of, of, uh, of our provisioned throughput. Uh, we can do that, uh, but this is just a lab. We won't need that for now, so we'll just continue with that. Okay, so now we can review there. So we've got our table name. It's going to ha have a uh, primary key of of uh, ID. We've got here no no alarms and no streams enabled, and we've created a global set or defined a global secondary index for it of product category, which is a string for the hash, and the range is going to be a price. So we're going to be looking for product categories uh, within product categories uh, with a with a range of, uh, of price so and projecting all attributes for that so we just click on create okay so we're creating our table and soon that will be if we click clicking on refresh it will eventually be active which it is now so we can have a look at the details of that so we've got here again ID it's in our um, US standard region And we've got an ARN for it there as well, which we'll use later on when we're referencing it with our SDK. Okay, and now we can look at exploring that date, uh, that table and, uh, and adding some more items to that table. So, 
And here we uh, already have our uh, ID attribute, uh, product category in there, and price. So these have been picked up because we defined this in our uh, in our primary key, and these two we defined in our global secondary index. So they've already been uh, defined for us. So we've got some more that we need to add in there, but to start filling this out. So we'll give this one an ID of 101 and the product category of book. And we'll give it a price of say minus two. And now we'll look at adding some more attributes on there. So we just click on here and select append and we're going to append a string. Okay, so we're just going to call this title and we'll give it a value of uh, book, book 101 title. Okay, so I'm just cutting and pasting here from the lab notes. So when you do that, just make sure that there's no additional trailing spaces put on there. So just go through all these and make sure there's no additional spaces on the end being put in, because that will cause an error when we uh, run our queries, because the uh, uh, what we're looking for won't be the same, especially when we're looking at the, the actual names of the attributes here. So I just check all that, that there's no nothing in there. So that's fine. Okay, so just fast forwarded there. So we've got uh, an ID, which is number 101, product category, which is a string book, uh, price, which is type number, uh, title, which is a string, in publication, which is Boolean, page count, which is number, uh, dimensions, which is string, authors, which is string, and ISBN, which is string. Uh, so just check that you've got that right, uh, and if that's fine, then just click on Save. Okay, so once we've uh, saved our item, then we can go into, so we just uh, go into Browse Items, and then we can click on Start a New Scan. So just uh, collect our test table ID there, and we can start a new scan on that, and it will find our item there. So we can see there ID 101, uh, and the authors, uh, and that. So we've successfully created a single item uh, to go onto our, our DynamoDB table. So as you can appreciate, that took quite a bit of time, and you certainly want to, don't want to do that for any amount of data. It's good for actually setting it all up to start with, um, but when you're bringing in large amounts of data, you certainly don't want to do anything manually. So we're going to look at the uh, in the next part of this lab to use... Uh, some commands there to batch import uh, multiple items at once. So I'll see you in the next lesson.